Hello, my name is uh, Jean-Pierre Desprez. I am the uh, Vice Chair on the uh, Council on Lifestyle and Cardiometabolic uh, Health at the American Heart Association. And I'm here with uh, Dr. Luc uh, Jusset uh, from uh, Harvard, who uh, did a uh, study, who's going to report here at the meeting, a, a study on the relationship between fried food consumption and uh, health. So Dr. Jusset, thank you for joining us. Sure. Could you tell us, uh, in a nutshell, what was the study is all about? What is it about? So uh, certainly we conducted uh, an observational study uh, on fried food and the risk of heart failure. The rationale behind the study is that uh, several studies have reported a positive association between eating fried food and risk factor for heart failure, including diabetes, high blood pressure, heart attack. But the results have not been consist uh, consistent. So uh, the nurses' health study, the health professional study, show an increased risk of consuming fried food with the risk of heart attack. But other study, including a large Spanish study, did not show an association between fried food and heart attack. And as you know, heart attack is a major risk factor for heart failure. So we wanted to know whether uh, we could assess the frequency of eating fried food in uh, the physician health study and the risk of developing heart failure. So how many subjects were involved in this observational study? Although the physician health study has uh, about 30,000 uh, male physicians, we included after exclusion of um, uh, missing data 15,300 male subjects that uh, were analyzed in this. And you had study. a follow-up of uh, how many years? We have an average follow-up of 10 years. Okay. Ten years. Now, now, you report that relationship between uh, uh, f uh, consumption of uh, uh, fried food, and obviously, uh, 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 very regular consumption of fried food is likely to be also a marker of uh, a diet of poor nutritional quality. Have you uh, examined this, this issue in your analysis? Uh, yes, we did, because that was our concern, that perhaps pe people eating uh, french fry or fried chicken, you know, it may be a marker of poor diet quality. But these, number one, they're all male physicians. But we assess the overall diet quality using the alternate healthy eating index, which contain uh, the several metrics, including the number of serving of fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. whole grain, uh, trans fat, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and we broke down into um, quintile, meaning five equal groups of those 15,000. And the top three groups on that score are people with the best overall diet quality, and we separate those from the bottom two uh, quintile, which are those with the poorest diet quality. And uh, to our surprise, we saw that this result was strongest in the top three quintile, meaning the physician with the best overall diet quality of uh, frequent consumption of uh, fried food was associated with a high risk of developing heart failure in that group, suggesting that it is not an indication of poor diet quality, but it's something other than that for example, uh, we know that uh, frying food can increase the energy density of food. So uh, if the person ingests more calorie than they need, then the body will store the excess calorie in terms of fat, which could bring other risk factors, obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure. And this has been independently demonstrated that frequency of fried food consumption raises the risk of high blood pressure, diabetes, and other risk factors. So you think uh, energy density is a possibility? Is there also the possibility that obviously that heat exposure could alter, you know, uh, the lipids? That's correct. That's correct. That's a second pathway. Second pathway is that <clears throat> when you heat uh, the oil, you can increase the amount of trans fat. And in our study, we show a positive correlation between the frequency of eating fried food and the amount of trans fat in the diet, meaning more frequent consumption of fried food led to more trans fat in, uh, in, 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 in the person. Second, uh, we know that frying food can increase the amount of oxidized LDL cholesterol, 
which is a more atherogenic, meaning a progression of atherosclerosis could be accelerated by that process. So we think there's some uh, viable potential mechanism by which eating fried food could uh, be detrimental to health. So therefore, from a diet perspective, this is another thing that we need to have on our radio screen. In addition to paying attention to diet quality, we should be careful about uh, overeating, I guess, our food. Absolutely. Uh, our study, the good news from our study is that the risk did not double until you were eating fried food daily or more. So when people were eating one to three, the risk increase was only 24%. When they were eating four to six per week, uh, there was only 28% increased risk of heart failure. It's only when they were eating seven or more uh, per week that we have the doubling increase of the rate of heart failure. So, so as every it good is thing often, in moderation. That's <laughs> right. As it is often the case, take home message in moderation, please. Thank you, Dr. Juicy. Thank, Thank you, you very much.